Hello, this is Matthew Poliak from uh, Hillcrest High School. Uh, I am dealing with the uh, KISA accreditation system um, for the Kansas Educational System of Accreditation Systems Accreditation process. Um, that's this assignment. Uh, I started by talking with my building principal, spent some time discussing with her what uh, what it took to be an accredited high school um, here in Country Club Hills, Illinois, uh, one of the suburbs of far south suburbs of Chicago. It turns out uh, we are not accredited. Um, I talked with her, and uh, we found um, in her records we found this document showing that we were accredited, but that our accreditation uh, lapsed in 2012, uh, and that has not been pursued or renewed since then. So the last time that was done was uh, almost 15 years ago now. Uh, <clears throat> it turns out that that accreditation lasts uh, about five years. So uh, she was unfamiliar with the process of how it was done and uh, whether or not it was necessary. Uh, in doing some research, she, uh, she sent me an email um, uh, regarding uh, that process and where I could find out more information. I then went online and found uh, sort of some more detailed step-by-step about the accreditation process in Illinois, but apparently it is not necessary. And, uh, and many, in fact, most uh, public schools in Illinois are not accredited in any way. Although we did find one that was uh, one of the local schools that's about six miles south of here in uh, Homewood Flossmoor, and uh, they apparently are accredited through Advanced Ed, the NCATE uh, system. Um, so I guess the remainder of my time I'll spend talking about not uh, not the Illinois process, which we don't have to worry about, but instead the KISA system there, and uh, we'll talk about those few things for just a couple minutes each. Um, one, uh, as I spoke with the building principal, we sp spent a little bit of time talking about relationships, specifically uh, relationships with uh, with among students and among uh, staff members. Uh, collaborating with each other. We've tried to coordinate lunch hours and so forth so that staff members will have uh, uh, consistent times when they could consistently meet and, and talk with each other and, and work with each other. But aside from that, there's not a whole lot of direct collaboration going on. We have tried to develop uh, relationships to build a cohort system within our individual uh, not, not classes, but at the class as a whole, meaning the freshman class, the sophomore class, and so forth. Um, we've developed a freshman learning center a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and uh, that has now translated into the next year a sophomore learning center. Um, each of the classes has, uh, has a sponsor, uh, has several sponsors that would work with them as kind of mentors. I I'm skeptical myself as to how effective a, a mentor will be if they're trying to mentor 100 or 200 people at a time. Um, it seems to me those sorts of relationships really work better when they're one-on-one -on -one in small groups or, or individuals. Uh, but it is something that we're working toward and something that we're hoping will make a, will make a significant difference. So there's that. Um, next would be irrelevance. We're talking specifically uh, with reference to relevance. I wanted to in the interest of time, we'll cut right to technology, which was something that has been of particularly particular importance to our school. Uh, just in the last few years, we've uh, put in a, uh, expanded the Wi-Fi systems, uh, put in a bunch of new smart boards and those sorts of things. But the big thing is that we've moved to a one-on-one, one-on-one um, -on -one technology uh, 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 availability for students. They each, every freshman coming in this year, has an iPad. Uh, and that will go carry over for the next several years. So next year, every freshman coming in will be given an iPad as part of their uh, as part of their registration process. Um, as a result, every freshman is being taught how to use Google Slides and other programs and other apps and so forth. But specifically, things that will carry over through their uh, entire four-year curriculum, as well as presumably into their career. Uh, ventures as well. So that's very effective and useful. Um, we've been exposed to Mastery Manager. Each of us as staff members, uh, technologically speaking, Mastery Manager is a wonderful system for um, for helping us to uh, organize and, and uh, collect data, useful data. And that 
leads into responsive culture. That responsive culture is um, part of that will be using the data that we collect uh, from Mastery Manager. Uh, it has everything from from uh, allows quick access to data regarding uh, assessments, um, individual teachers' assessments. We, I can, for example, I can uh, put in all of my test questions and uh, rank them and, and score them based on uh, whether or not they meet the, the state standards um, and so forth. Those state standards are listed behind me there on the wall in my classroom. Uh, and uh, Mastery Manager is allowing us to do that in a, in a quick and efficient way, in a way that, uh, that essentially would not have been done. It just, from a practical standpoint, wouldn't be done if you had to do it by hand. Uh, but by doing it through this computer scanning process, it really is fast and quick and actually, actually quite useful. Um, so there's that. The last one uh, would have been uh, rigor. And of course, we're out of time, but that's, that's one of the important ideas. And we'll go ahead and leave it at that. All right. I tried to cram it all in. Sorry.